Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome everyone for our online NPTEL course Environmental Chemistry and Microbiology. This course will be taught by Professor Shudha Goel and myself Professor Anjali Pal. We are both from the Civil Engineering Department of IIT Kharagpur. Uh, we have divided this course into two parts. The first part will be Environmental Chemistry that will be covered by me and the second part will be environmental microbiology that will be taught by Professor Shudha Goel. So, in my uh, module 3, I will uh, talk about uh, the um, uh, chemical kinetics. In my first module, I already told about the acids bases and in my second module, I have uh, covered the chemical equilibrium. This is my third module and I will talk here about the chemical kinetics. Now, chemical kinetics you all know, chemical reactions you know that there are some uh, reactants that react to form some products. and um, uh, uh, in this lecture, this is my uh, 12 lecture and uh, in this lecture under chemical kinetics, I will cover the rate of a reaction, the order of a reaction, molecularity of a reaction and determination of order by using differential uh, rate law. So, to go to talk about the chemical kinetics, uh, let us start uh, a very simple, um, simple example. Say for example, A is a reactant which is giving a single reactant A is giving to a single product P, then uh, rate and order of a reaction is very important. And uh, actually the reactions we can uh, think about in two different ways. Uh, we can describe the reaction in two different, we can classify the chemical reaction in two different ways. The first is the molecularity of reaction that means considering the number of molecules that must react to form the uh, reaction product and uh, that is the molecularity. Okay. And then uh, the second one is the in terms of the reaction order. So, we have to remember that molecularity of reaction we can tell from the balanced equation uh, that is uh, that just now I told that number of molecules that uh, that are reacting from there. So, uh, in terms of molecularity there may be a unimolecular reaction, there may be bimolecular reaction, there may be termolecular reaction, but in terms of reaction order this order has to be determined by uh, experiment. We cannot uh, just directly from seeing a balanced, re balanced reaction, balanced equation, we cannot tell that the order of the uh, sometimes uh, order of the reaction um, is uh, 2 or 1 or 0. Sometimes the molecularity and order may match, may be the same, but um, not necessarily it will be the same, it may be different also. That is a very important concept for chemical kinetics. Now, for which type of reactions we should determine the order? Okay. There are three types of reactions. First thing is the irreversible reaction. You no know, irreversible and reversible reaction I already discussed in the chemical equilibrium chapter. And um, uh, so, order we can determine for the irreversible reactions. 
or order we can determine in the initial stages of um, most irreversible reactions means there there are many reactions um, they are actually all all reactions are reversible reactions but those reactions um, which go far to the right we can tell that okay this is irreversible reaction now many reactions are reversible reactions for those reactions also we can determine the order in the initial stages okay initial phase of the reaction beginning of the reaction okay we can determine the order now for reversible reactions where the position of equilibrium this is another uh, case uh, in case of reversible reaction where the position of equilibrium lies far to the right this this concept i have already given in the in the equilibrium uh, when i was discussing the equilibrium so far to the right means it is almost going to the completion in that case also we can determine the order of the reaction now uh, what is the order of the reaction that we must know okay so we have already got some idea about the rate say for example this is a very simple reaction a is giving to p so rate of disappearance of a that is the rate of the reaction we can consider that means we are considering the the reactant a so how the uh, how a is disappearing that is also we can tell that rate of the rate of the reaction isn't it so uh, it can be because it is the reactant so minus sign we should be applied so minus dca dt this is the um, rate and so rate is is uh, related to the concentration in some way how it is rate is is the uh, nothing but k it is the proportionality constant into ca C A, you know that concentration can be can be expressed in two different ways. This is one way to represent so concentration of A. A is the subscript. Another way we can represent the concentration that is within the third bracket. Okay, so rate rate of reaction rate of disappearance of A is nothing but K into C A to the power n. So what is K and what is uh, n and what is ca ca is the concentration of a at a particular time at time t say for example and n is the order of the reaction and and k is is a constant which is um, which is called the specific rate constant or it also called rate constant so uh, this is something like the you know that the equilibrium constant so equilibrium constant does not depend on the concentration that we have already learned this is also does not uh, does not depend on the concentration it depends on the temperature but it does not depend on the concentration and depending on the order of the reaction the unit will change the unit of k will change but the unit of rate uh, is the same this is nothing but the con change of concentration per unit time so it is the uh, the if you express the concentration in terms of moles per liter say for example and times a second then it will be moles per liter per second uh, or if you uh, if you express the time in terms of hour then moles per liter per hour if you uh, express the concentration in terms of milligram per liter then it will be milligram per liter per second or per hour so rate will rate um, will be the same uh, in the, um, means um, irrespective of the um, first order or zero order or second order reactions now uh, here you can see that um, if you this is the rate expression it is called rate equation or rate expression okay now if you take the logarith logarithm in both sides then what you will get you will get log log dca by dt is equals to log k uh, plus n log uh, ca log k plus n log ca or you can write uh, we, you can write that 
in this uh, way you can express or otherwise this concentration term you can write in this way also that as just now you have I have explained this. Now, if by experiment you can determine this value log d a by d t log d a log minus d a by d t minus is because it is the reagent. So, uh, if you can determine experimentally these values uh, and um, log a then uh, the different uh, concentrations of a then if you plot log a in the x axis and in the y axis log minus d a by d t then uh, depending on the order of the reaction you will get this this curves it is a it is the equ uh, equation of a straight line so you will get straight line curves but the slope will be different in case of uh, second order reaction because this is 2 so you will get slope 2 in case of first order reaction you will get the slope 1 and in case of zero order reaction you will get a straight line which is the parallel which is parallel to the x axis so and so the so it is possible to determine the order in this way uh, and you also need to know that uh, that um, uh, order because it is it is uh, some value you are obtaining from the experiment so it may be either integer or it may be fraction also say for example it can be 1.5 you it can be 0 0.5 also so order can be uh, fraction also. Um, uh, say for example, acetaldehyde, acetaldehyde uh, decomposition. So, decomposition of acetaldehyde at 450 K. So, at high temperature you will see that the uh, order is uh, 1.5. This is possible, but sometimes um, in practical purpose say for example, you see if you see the slope is like 0.95 then you can think that ok it is 1 it is close to 1. So, you can tell that ok order is 1. So, it is first order reaction. Um, now, the uh, so, uh, so it is understandable that uh, from the concept of instantaneous rate uh, this is the minus d c d t here you know that is the slope at a particular point and the, the, the time difference is very very small. Um, so, to determine the instantaneous rate uh, you understand from your common sense that uh, it is difficult ok. It is very difficult to determine the instantaneous rate. Uh, so, how then you will get the order of the reaction by using the previous expression ok. So, Swinburne you know Swinburne in 1971 he uh, he developed two uh, different methods one is the order with respect to time and uh, the other is order with respect to concentration so, there are two methods developed by him uh, by these two methods uh, the order can be determined easily so what is his assumption is that he assumed that at the midpoint of the time interval delta t uh, d c d t you can think that it is same as delta c by delta t. So, this is his assumption ok and then um, um, the c you know uh, c is the midpoint and c it is the c average c average is the midpoint of the concentration interval delta c ok. So, if you um, uh, assume this thing then you can uh, you can um, say that log delta c uh, by delta t is same as log k is equal to log k plus n log c average. So, this is the same expression, but this is his assumption that this is the uh, midpoint of this delta c and uh, this is instead of d c a d t uh, he assumed that delta c a by delta t ok. So, is, is this is uh, easy this is easy to understand ok. Now, uh, now if the reactant concentrations now how the experiment will be. So, uh, you do some reaction say for example, you do some reaction and the reactant concentrations are measured experimentally 
okay, at different time intervals. I will show some example then it will be uh, more clear. So, at different time intervals you uh, measure the concentrations experimentally, this is easy. And then the reaction order can be determined from the slope of the straight line obtained by plotting uh, delta C A by delta T versus log C A, this is average. So, that way you will get the uh, order of the reaction, okay. after plotting this versus this, uh, you will get the order of the reaction. Okay. And this order he said that it is order with respect to time. Now, let us see with some example, okay. how is the example. Okay. Here you can see that um, this is the experiment, okay. this is the experiment um, uh, that is done with some, um, some batch in some batch reactor, okay. you know some batch reactor okay. and this is the time, time in minute okay. 20, 32, 41 and uh, this is um, 50. So, time uh, different time at different times you are taking some um, aliquot and then, um, then uh, measuring the concentration of the reactant that concentration you term as C A. Okay. Now, then you have to uh, uh, you have to uh, make some table to show the data this is the time. Uh, time column. So, these are the times that you are getting from here and this is the C A, these are the C A values. Okay. So, delta C A what it will be? It will be the average of this means midpoint of this. So, this is this one okay. and midpoint of this and then uh, means not midpoint, this is the difference. Okay. This is the difference of this one, this is the difference of this one and this is the difference of this one. Then delta T, delta T is the difference of this one, this difference of this one, difference of this one. So, that is why it is written in the middle middle. Okay. Now, so you got delta C A values and delta T values. Now, you have to calculate delta C A by delta T. Okay. In this column, you have calculated this value and this is the average. So, what is the average? This one plus this one by 2, this one plus this one by 2 like this. Okay, so, this is the C A average, actually average means midpoint. Okay. And now, once you have all this data, then you can uh, calculate, you can find out the log values. So, log minus delta C A by delta T and this is log C A uh, average. Okay. And then you have these values and these values. Now, you have to plot log delta C A uh, by delta T, obviously minus I am not mentioning all the time this one and log C A. So, uh, the curve you should get, I have not shown you the curve how it will be, you can do it, uh, this is an example means uh, exercise, um, you can do it and you can plot it and you, you can see how you are getting the end value that is the order of the reaction. Okay. So, this is one way of doing by using the differential rate law um, to get the order. Now, the other method he has explained the same uh, person Swinburne 1971, this is the order with respect to concentration. Now, uh, what um, he has done here that the experiment is carried out with uh, several mini minimum 4 runs because to get a straight line we need uh, uh, minimum some points um, that is why uh, minimum 4 runs are done. Uh, what he has varied? He has varied the initial concentrations. So, starting concentration, initial concentration he has varied. So, four different experiments with different initial concentrations of A. Okay. And then these concentrations are considered as the concentration at 0 time. Okay. Now, the reaction starts. So, up when the reaction, we have four experimental setup and then reaction starts and then uh, just small interval has been taken say 1 minute is, is taken and then the concentration of A is measured for uh, the 4 runs. Okay. Then the delta C A, delta C A means uh, the uh, concentration difference say 0 minute and 1 minute that we can easily find out and delta T, delta T here we have taken 1 minute. So, delta T is 1. So, uh, this uh, 
uh, this value we can get and we can get also the log of this and then log C A. This is the initial concentration that is why 0 term is coming here also 0 term is coming C A 0, C A 0 is nothing but the initial concentration. Okay. So, log C A 0 we can easily calculate and then we have to plot log uh, minus delta C A by delta T 0 is plotted versus delta C A. Okay. So, here also uh, we have to uh, see that uh, what is the slope uh, of the uh, of the straight line. So, once the slope is known then we can find out the order of the reaction from the linear plot. Okay. So, reaction order determined by this method is termed as order with respect to concentration. These two are very nice methods. Okay. Uh, now, uh, to understand this one uh, there is some you know uh, you can see this uh, data uh, from the experiment uh, uh, that has been done with 4 runs. Okay. So, time here is the time. So, 0 minute means initial concentration then 1 minute. So, um, just after 1 minute the, uh, the concentrations are measured. So, this is the 0 time concentration this is the at 1 minute what is the concentration there are run 1, run 2, run 3 and run 4 and then you can you have to uh, put it put it in a table. So, there are runs 4 runs so, 1 run first run second run third run, four run fourth run and then here the calculated values you know 5.4. So, this is the difference delta C A delta T is 1 here. So, uh, the difference uh, by 1 so difference is 5.4 here in this case it is 8.8 .8, in this case 12.6 and 17.8 here. So, you go, you get this value then you have to take the log log of this value um, that is nothing but this one then log C A this is the initial concentration. So, log value of the initial concentrations so, these are the. So, you have to plot these values against these values and then you have to see that uh, what is the um, what is the um, means um, uh, slope slope of the. Um, straight line. Then you can easily find out the order of the uh, reaction. This is the some method that differential rate law using differential rate law you can uh, you can determine the order of the reaction. Okay. That means instantaneous rate you are just converting it into delta term means uh, the the time period you are increasing and uh, in the first case you are taking the midpoint as the concentration the concentration uh, two different concentration you are mid taking the midpoint uh, that is the average concentration and here in this case you are taking the initial actually initial uh, part uh, very short time period you are considering and uh, that is the um, that is the order with respect to concentration. So, this uh, the, the in this lecture what uh, have been covered you can read from the same two books that I mentioned in my previous lecture that is uh, um, under uh, chemical kinetics uh, the same two books you can read to get more uh, um, more elaborative uh, way you can get the concept. Uh, thank you very much uh, for your kind patience.